This talk was given at the WSIS conference in Geneva at the United Nations. Thank you to everybody who is here. I appreciate your time and attention, and a special thanks to John C. Havens for the opportunity to be here today and for the opportunity to work with you on IEEE's Project 7010. Project 7010 is the development of well-being metric standard for artificial intelligence and autonomous systems. John asked me to speak to well-being and the Beyond GDP movement and the linkages to the Sustainable Development Goals. I will start by explaining a little about what Project 7010 is and then give you an idea of the landscape of the Beyond GDP movement, also called the Happiness and Wellbeing Movement. Then I will finish by showing you how we address sustainability, happiness, and well-being in P7010 Wellbeing Metric Standard for Artificial Intelligence and Autonomous Systems. So let's begin with P7010. First, let's be very clear that we are talking about the well-being of humans. We are not talking about the well-being of AI and AS. We are talking about understanding the impacts on the well-being of humans and how to guide the development and management of AI and AS to have positive impacts on our well-being. Why is this even an issue? Because the main measure of success, our predominant and primary goal by country, by company, and by individual right now in our current landscape is gross domestic product for country, profit for company, and wealth for individuals. Right now, I bet for most of you, your default thinking is that the richest person in the room, the company with the biggest overall profits, and the country with the highest GDP is the most successful. But if we reframe success in terms of who is the happiest in the room, what would this mean? What would it mean for AI and AS? Let's think about that for a moment. Now, we all already use AI in various forms to help us in our daily lives. How many of you have run into this scenario? You're taking care of a small child. Maybe it's your niece or your nephew who you're babysitting. You have an important call and it's just you and the kid. So what do you do? You pull up Netflix or YouTube and you put on a show. The kid is unhappy at the sudden withdrawal of your attention, but quickly comforted by the activity of the screen. And what is the screen doing? Comforting the child, of course. Now we know that attachment and at an early age is key to developing empathy the capacity to love, and a healthy sense of self. It's also important to other brain functioning, creative thinking, problem solving, environmental mastery, and other important skills that we need to surmount the global challenge today and in our future. We also know that loneliness is one of the drivers for overconsumption, buying more goods or services than you need or even want. In a GDP and profit-driven world, we put that screen in front of our kids and in doing so, unintentionally install a sense of loneliness. We do not attach. We allow the child to grow up, never feeling like he is quite enough, constantly striving to be more powerful, more famous, richer, or more attractive. Our child is exposed to product placement that creates desire in him. He may suffer from anxiety, and we buy him the next gadget in an effort to soothe and reassure him. We develop AI and AS that gets better and better at distracting the attention of our child, sucking up minutes and hours without a whimper. We train him early to hop onto the hedonic treadmill and stay there for a lifetime. In the meantime, we are burning up our natural resources, polluting Mother Earth, and turning our backs on the rest of the world's population. 
How would it be different in a well-being driven world? Let's imagine that we still put the screen in front of the child, but we know that what she is watching will foster a healthy attachment to her care provider, build her resilience and her self-esteem and efficacy. We develop AI and AS that fosters creative thinking, problem solving, and capacity for personal growth in humans. We don't know exactly how to do this yet, but we are learning. So why bother? Why not just use GDP and let things sort themselves out? Maybe we can learn from history. GDP, the sum of all goods and services produced in a year, was created by a man named Simon Kuznets during the Great Depression. At that time, the U.S. Congress needed a way to measure and manage the economy. They knew the metric they were using was not good enough. By the way, what they would do was count the number of boxcars that left the railway station to get an idea of national output. When Kuznets delivered GDP to Congress, he cautioned, the welfare of a nation can scarcely be inferred from a measurement of national income. With the use of GDP as the metric to measure and manage the economy, the Great Depression was overcome, and then 10 years later, after World War II, GDP was again used as the metric nations would use to heal the economic wounds of the war and bring, bring countries together through interdependence in the hope that never again would such a war occur. This was at a conference called Bretton Woods. Again, it worked and people experienced greater well-being as economies recovered. But today's world is much different. Our use of GDP has caused greater and greater divide between the rich and poor globally. And within many nations, while the average GDP tells one story, the truth of the matter is that a small minority vastly benefit while the majority struggle to meet basic needs without a meaningful opportunity to meet higher needs and too often at the expense of our human rights. Adding to the woes is, our, is the cost upon the environment from our drive for economic growth and ever-increasing consumption rates. To address the growing economic inequality, social injustice, and ecological, ecological damage, the UN passed resolution Happiness Towards a Holistic Approach to Development in 2011. The resolution called on nations to follow the lead of Bhutan, the originator of gross national happiness, to develop wider measures of well-being that encompass and supersede GDP, and to use these measures for policy purposes. Learning from our past, we can turn to the present for clues. Just last week, the fifth World Happiness Report was issued. Finland was found to be the happiest nation on earth based on six factors, social support, income, healthy life expectancy, trust in government and business, perceived freedom to make life decisions, and generosity. Last year, it was Norway. In fact, the happiest countries and Switzerland is among them, all have a few key things in common. If we think of well-being in terms of meeting a hierarchy of needs, basic needs are met. If we think of well-being in terms of the economy, the Gini coefficient is low. If we think of well-being in terms of nature, these countries' ecological footprints would make the U.S., China, and even France and Germany blush. Next, I want to show you a little bit about going beyond GDP in the business, governmental, academic, and NGO sectors. Now, in the business sector, we all have heard about the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit, and we all know that over 80% of Fortune 500 companies are measuring, if not managing, their environmental or social performance, and 65% of them are using the Global Reporting Initiative Indicator. In the governmental sector, the United Arab Emirates has taken a leadership role in integrating happiness and well-being metrics as the guide for all governmental departments, from energy to policing, from regulating financial markets to education. In academia, mounting research is producing the data and evidence about the domains of well-being, and the first World Happiness Policy Report was issued this past February at the Dialogue for Global Happiness in Dubai. 
And in the NGO sector, there is a plethora of indices that help us define and understand what going beyond GDP means, including the SDG indicators, the European Social Survey, Bhutan's Gross National Happiness Index, the Human Development Index, the Happy Planet Index, and many others. This gives you just a peek into the activities of the Beyond GDP or Well-Being and Happiness movement. Suffice to say there is a lot going on in the business, governmental, academic, and NGO sectors to rethink our definition of success and go beyond GDP. So by now you're probably wondering what I mean when I say well-being and if my definition agrees with yours. We use this term widely to encompass many concepts and aspects of life. When we say well-being, we mean, how are you feeling? We mean, are you satisfied with your life? How is your self-esteem? Do you feel like a worthy person? Does your life have meaning? What does it feel like to be asked these questions? We include subjective metrics because what you think about your well-being matters. When we gather subjective data at a group level, we get a good idea of a population's well-being. We include objective metrics like poverty rates, Gini coefficients, voting participation, and the quality of our air, water, and ecosystems. With objective and subjective metrics, we can get a balanced picture of our well-being. In sum, we define well-being broadly because many aspects of life make a difference to our well-being as humans. I want to show you briefly what we are working on right now for P7010 well-being metric standard for AI and AS. This is a graphic that represents the domains of well-being we are identifying based on the SDG indicators, World Values Survey, Gallup World Poll, Gross National Happiness Index, Human Development Index, Freedom House indicators, and many other indices. Our next step will be to identify the indicators within these domains that could be used to inform the development and management of AI and AS. Our logic model for this work is that you can only manage what you can measure. You get what you measure. Well-being can be measured. Let's measure and manage AI and AS for a world where all have the opportunity to experience well-being. In conclusion, Project 7010 is a tall order. It's complicated. It's messy. But it's necessary. And most importantly, it's doable.